Hey, what's up, friends? So unfortunately, this episode uh, was rife with technical difficulties. Um, so the audio is pretty fucked up. So I apologize for that. What happened was uh, I had made some changes in the studio to actually better accommodate doing this podcast. And I made some changes on the hardware that I didn't reflect in the software. And so unfortunately, Jason, our guest's microphone was actually not on or it wasn't recording. Actually, we thought it was on, but it wasn't recording. So I did my best to clean it up, and uh, because the conversation was so good, I didn't want to just scrap the episode. Uh, you know, Jason came out, so I apologized to Jason, apologize to anybody listening, but it is what it is. Uh, and then we also had some computer issues going on throughout the uh, recording, too, which kind of killed the flow of the conversation a couple times, which also sucked. So it is what it is. Mistakes happen. I'm sorry. But if you can uh, deal with the crappy audio, there's some great conversation in here with Jason. So uh, thanks for listening. Please check it out. Sorry about the crappy audio. Peace. Uh it's funny you sing that um, I watched well I kinda watched this Jamie Foxx movie today called Day Shift on Netflix. He like fucking hunts vampires and shit. It's kinda wild. It's Blade? It's like Blade? You know uh, Blade? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. yeah it, it, nah, not really. Like because Blade <laughs> is a vampire any or some oh, shit. Like that. Half a vampire, half yeah. man, good call. <laughs> yeah, 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 baby. Yeah, yeah, he's not uh, Jamie Foxx is just a dude that fucking kills vampires. It's kind of like a horror comedy, but oh, it wasn't Snoop bad. Had. Snoop's in it. Uh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. You just was singing that, so I was just yeah, yeah. I kind of yeah. fell asleep though because I was just high. <laughs> <laughs> so what's up? What up? If anybody's listening, welcome back to the Dangerville Podcast. I'm Boss Danger. We're here with the infamous Mach Three. What he it? He and I are dressed the same today. <laughs> Twinsies, <laughs> twinsies. Blue shorts and black t-shirt. Rocking this Holloway shirt for the Rocking record. The Holloway shirt. It's a pretty dope shirt. Represent hard, my friend. Um, today we got our very special guest for episode four. Our second guest. This guy here is one of the best producers in, I would say in Michigan. Definitely in West Michigan. Uh, he is the owner operator of Exit Door Productions. He is a killer guitarist, probably one of the best death metal guitarists around, I would say, too. Technical death metal, what do you consider you? Technical death metal? I mean, yeah, I could, yeah. you could say that, but yeah, it's, yeah. it's becoming less and less throughout the years. It's, just because it's not about <laughs> impressing anymore. Right, right, right. You know, it's more about can you write a good song or not? Absolutely. But, so, welcome, Jason Ingersoll, oh. aka MC Infinite. How are you doing, bro? Hey? Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate that intro. I'm doing great. Appreciate you having me on. And, I sort of uh, wrote it down. That was off the cuff. Yeah, that was hard. <laughs> Hell of an intro. That was impressive, man. Like, a little I, intimidated you be in your presence I after that thing. Like, yo, yo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stay here for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him. <laughs> no, I appreciate it, though. Thanks. Yeah, hell yeah, yeah man. Of course. So we've known each other a long ass time, but yeah, also kind of not. Like, we go yeah, way back, but yeah, kind of yeah. don't. My microphone's fucked up here. Um, I was telling him that your first band was with my brother and Dave started one of your first bands anyway. Coming yeah, over that was my very <laughs> first band. Jamming right? in Dude. my basement, which yep. is uh, where I still got Dangerville Studio B there in that basement that I was talking about. Yeah, that's why it's so crazy too, just because we've known of each other for so long. But I knew your brother. We played with my cousin Adam Garvey, and that was the sh first show I ever played, just like out of this shitty little combo crate amp. Yeah. We, we played out in this party in Spring Lake, and it was the first time we ever played, but your brother played drums, uh -huh. and as we discussed, the last time we hung out, uh, Dan was on bass, and then okay. Dave Stark. Yeah. You know? Singing. And Dave was singing. Singing and, and yeah, playing my, guitar. Yeah. Or, uh, my cousin Adam Garvey was actually singing. Okay, yeah. Dave was Adam doing Garvey, some yeah. singing, and then, yeah. Right on. Yeah, so. Yeah. Just weird how things go around like that yeah i'm sure it was pretty terrible <laughs> oh, it, was yeah, it was the worst what were you guys playing it would have been like probably metallica covers sober and from tool uh, okay. fucking what are the easy songs like fucking i was sweet remember. dreams from Marilyn Manson. yeah right right yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, oh yeah 
all yeah. that beginner. Got to get that low hanging fruit just okay, off the yeah, bat yeah. for sure, brother. Bones by Alice in Chains, just the zero, one, two, three songs. Yeah. You know, I remember uh, Dave always playing like corn songs. Yeah, uh, he showed me how to play Unforgiven by Metallica. Yeah, I remember that because I was just learning how to play guitar. Yep, yeah. he, he was a, a good guitar player, man. Yeah, I mean, he still is, right? Yeah. Still doing it. Uh, I don't. I don't know because like I actually recorded um, the product of society he was in a band with Brandon uh, Pasqua okay uh, they were called product of society I don't yeah. know if you I think seen I, them or I think I saw them um, maybe did you guys play with them out at that fucking bar and Twin Lake or Probably, something that came yeah out? yeah now that I think about it yep yeah something like that but yeah so anyway like I recorded them, but he didn't really play guitar. He just kind of sang and putting the joint down. I'm good on that for now. Thanks, bro. Appreciate that. But yeah, so I don't really know. I don't know. I know you said he was having some hand trouble or something like that. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, when I saw him uh, play with you guys, he was still fucking throwing it down, dude. Just yeah. pure. <laughs> yeah, he, he's always been a good, great musician. Yeah. And then speaking of, do you know Steve then? Yes, yeah. bro. Yeah, I was in. Uh, so in Steve and I were in drum line together, so I knew him pretty good. Uh, we were uh, actually trying to get something going a couple of years ago because he was. We were both kind of like between bands, and we were like, yeah. "What the fuck you doing?" You know, like it's just hard. You know, dude, I know, but like his that band asked me anything yeah. that he was in. Like that's still to this day, I'll listen to it all the time. That's like if I was gonna be in a band like at all, that's the kind of band I'd want to be in. It was like that like pop indie rock. rock yeah, right, or, that's, or, yeah, that's exactly what I want to do. Like good songwriting, yeah. like shit people actually listen to. Like right. people like would come out and see it instead of like, hey, come see my fucking technical death. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah, a good fun yeah, show, yeah, man. Yeah. There's a real dearth of like good fun, just yeah. like go shit, exactly. like, you know, slam a couple beers back yeah. and get after it fucking Def Leppard style. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. technical death metal is a hard sell. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yeah, oh yeah. You only do it for yourself. Uh, and then it's so discouraging you wonder why <laughs> alright so I gotta get a quick clarification in here sure. so when you're talking technical death metal cause you got 10,000 sub genres yeah, like yeah. are you talking like Meshuggah style fucking math metal with a little bit of fucking like extra scream mixed in or what's uh like what's a proxy band here so uh are you familiar with maybe a band Necrophagist a little bit okay, okay. they're, they're kind of like melodic technical metal yeah. you know okay like, so, still write songs you know but still goes kind of more along like i guess what you'd call like gent yeah. where it's kind of the weird time signatures and shit they're like kind that. of the godfathers of that yeah and then you have like the death core where there's more breakdowns and shit like that so we're not like that but we're kind of a mix in between okay I mean, it all kind of stems from actually the band death right i mean I like, yeah you could say that yeah. i mean it really if you go all the way back it's yeah led zeppelin black Sabbath, sure and, yeah, yeah you know but like yeah I mean, Death, they say, was the, uh, you know, creator of death metal, but everybody, yeah. like, kind of Every, sure, sure, will yeah. argue the point that he copied someone else or whatever. Of course. Yeah, everybody's of course. got something. Right. You know, yeah. it's just like yeah. anything else. Everybody's got it. So did you ever see, there was a, uh, a flick about it with one of the 17 Culkin brothers, right? And I'm, it's kind of escaped me right now, but it was about the, uh, the fucking original, original OG, apparently, death metal band in... Norway, Sweden, or somewhere thereabouts. You know what I'm talking about with the that one dude that ended up killing the uh, oh, the yeah, other guy yeah, there. Yeah. You're talking yeah. about black metal. Yeah. You're talking. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's a uh, different sub. Like I said, yeah, so many god. Okay. Sure. Yeah, yeah, Can't keep this shit all straight. But them motherfuckers take that shit serious, yeah, bro. With the yeah. inverted crosses and the pain they're burning and down. Churches. Yeah, yeah. And they're burning down churches and yeah, like Burzum. Like, Burzum. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Yep. Exactly. Burzum. Yeah. Emperor loosely related to yeah that or, stuff's like like but them guys are fucking corny man no that's what i'm saying is that stuff's like not like actually even like good like it's like no. i don't know I, I yeah of course going down those rabbit holes and to me it's just like okay like this is and then to be fair it's just fucking kids that you know they were 18 19 20 doing that shit or whatever but people fucking like love that shit like oh these are like the fucking and it's like yeah okay it's like well in a way though it's kind of it's interesting because like similar time frame you're talking all the hair band shit where you're kind of acting out like i know it's obviously a completely different genre but just in terms of like it's this whole theatrical thing and you are playing into xyz whatever your version of xyz is right so it's like the get all shit faced do the party thing you got the death metal guys that are super fucking death metal kind of playing into yeah. the whole scheme you know what i mean yeah man 
yeah, it's like um, it, that's kind of how music always goes to. It's kind of like what's what's happening now is kind of the thing that like a lot of people will try to gravitate towards, but some people will just stay true to what they started with, you know. What yeah. I mean? So, yeah. but the hairband shit, it was like when that shit started popping, there was just a lot of people trying to do that, you know. Even Pantera was fucking. That's how they started. Sure. <laughs> Hair yeah. bands, you know. Yeah, it's hilarious. Um, diamond, diamond, diamond Daryl. Daryl, <laughs> Daryl and then this band. Dime bag Daryl, right? No, he changed it. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. They, were, they were like hair band. They had like the yeah. uh, fucking eighty-eight or whatever. Oh yeah, Jesus, man, it's real old school. Okay. Yeah. What do you call that? Fucking spandex. spandex and, yeah. uh, the hair and the whole thing then they were just kind of like well this isn't really awesome that shit was going out anyway during that time yeah and, you know that you know so they just started becoming so all right what do you think that's a great thing because i wanted to ask you what do you think of this pantera reunion everybody's got huge opinions what's your thoughts on the pantera reunion yeah um or whatever you'd call it right now happening I think uh, I think uh, statements have came out and they're very aware that it's not it's like an homage to Pantera. So if you approach it with that, like you know, some people are calling it a money grab or what have you. Mm -hmm. I fortunately got the chance to see Pantera like five times when they were around. So for me, it's like I might go see it just because like I like the musicians involved, you know. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, like. It's not really my place to say one way or the other. To be honest, that's their fucking business. Yeah, right. Like, Agreed. I know. I know. Uh, at the end of the day, some people are going to be mad about it because yeah. it's not the real Pantera. Yeah. But fuck, dude, Phil's band right now is playing mostly fucking Pantera songs anyway. He's right. got some band called the. Uh, it's not even Super Joint or Down. It's yeah. some other the Illegals. Philip Ensemble okay. and the Illegals, and they're yeah, like yeah, they're sure. playing like a bunch of fucking Pantera songs. Like yeah. there's always shit like coming up. Like yeah. watch Phil's band play this Pantera song. So it's like he's already doing it. And he's going back right. to the well, he got that built-in audience for sure, man. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's like why not? It's still his fucking music. You know what I mean? All this Pantera talk's got me. <laughs> I forget what the actual show was. It might have been Tool or something. But one of our buddies Swanto was out there with us. And there's like some contingent of Pantera fans for whatever reason. It's like, uh, man, he's talking about that whole I shot dime bag t shirt. Oh, yeah. That's you remember. Yeah. He was going to show up with a shirt that said I shot dime bag. It was like right after. Uh, it's just a joke. You know, yeah. Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. <laughs> oh, man, people would think that way. Yeah, serious, yeah. Bro. No, I'm the kind of the opposite of you, though, is I was enjoying just fucking shitting on it, talking shit. Like, it seemed, does seem like a money grab. Like, I don't know. I'm probably not right, or maybe I am, but. That's you might, was, yeah, you might be. To me, it's just kind of like you know, after all this time, now they're both, both the Abbott brothers are gone now, and now all of a sudden these guys are popping up like this, and like I don't know. Can I say one thing? Yeah, it's not necessary. Right. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, that if, if that's that's probably my opinion now. It's not yeah. necessary. Yeah. I mean, it's not my place to say like. But man, if you got a chance to grab a bag to get a little bit of that sweet, well, sweet cheddar, man, true. like why the it's fuck true. not, dude? It's and they true. built it, so you it's know, true. like it's not, yep, you know. Yep. Everybody's got to cash in at some point. Right, gotta make yeah, a goddamn true. buck, dude. Right. Right. So it's still their music at the end of the day, right? Right. 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 If they still have an opportunity to maybe make some money off of it again, or even, yeah. you know, if you look at it in a different way to object. Objectively, maybe it'll get people that aren't aware of Pantera into Pantera. Yeah, yeah. indeed. I mean, so there's always that option. To yep. Get something circulate. A little exposure, a little awareness, and economics are always yeah. a factor. By the way, yeah. podcast uh, Dangerville sponsored by. Uh, no, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> the Pantera. <laughs> <laughs> I just felt like, to me, it's this one's a hard one, though, because the Abbott brothers were so crucial of that band. Like, they were really yeah. the core. You know, you can say what you want about Phil and Rex. They're great. It was all their band. I get it. But those brothers were, yeah. you know, so that's a hard one. It's not like it was some other band of just, like, four random people. And it's like, oh, the drummer's gone, but he wasn't really that important or whatever. Like, I don't know. The tones are undeniable, live and in the studio. Yeah. Drum tone and guitar tone from those two dudes. And like we yeah. were discussing before we turned this on, when you talk about players, it's about the player at the end of the day. Yeah. It's about Vinny playing those drums. Yeah. Like, Charlie's sick as fuck for yeah, Anthrax, yeah, and I yeah. love Anthrax, and I love Charlie. But Vinny Paul is the one that plays those drums, mm -hmm. and that's the way he plays it. Signature like, sound, yeah. Yeah, 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 agreed. And I love Zach Wilde, right. but I don't care if you 
play a Washburn and plug it into a crank yeah, amp, it's, still gonna it's sound not. Like it's going to sound yeah. like Zach Wild, and it will not sound like. John There's Wilde. always that chemistry factor, yeah. man. Regardless yeah. of John or whatever you're talking, like it's got to mesh, it's got to gel, and sometimes it's this fucking huge, man. Yeah. Signature sound can't be undersold. I was never all that huge into Pantera, honestly, though. You know, yeah. Uh, I was maybe a little young. I think you were a little um, young. You know, and they just—it never really caught me. Um, not that I haven't heard it all and like it or mm -hmm. whatever, you know. But like, it, it was never like a band that I was like, "This is like my band." You know, I was never yeah. gonna hang my head on it. Um, I didn't go see them. They played. You were probably at the show. It was at like LC Walker Arena yeah. back in the day. Like, I didn't go to that. Um, you know, kind of wish I would have now. Right. But where were you? When you heard uh, of Dimebag Daryl's murder, where were you, what were you doing? I'm sure it's one of those things where everybody remembers where they were or whatever. Or maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't remember, man. I, I just, uh, I think I read it online or something like that. I think I read it on a blog or it came across. I, to be honest, I don't remember. Do Thinking remember? through statistics, it was likely I was uh, jacking off and playing, <laughs> playing some men 64 or whatever the game. I thought that was going to be a great question. Well, let me tell you mine because it's kind of funny. I was working in the mall and... Uh, this old you know you know like mall walkers like old people that like go to the mall for exercise oh, yeah, yeah. rocking those reeboks yeah, those big ass yeah. white reeboks so it's like 10 o'clock in the morning or whatever there's nobody in the mall or whatever and there's this fucking old man mall walker who i kind of was like shooting the shit with every couple days or whatever you know you get to know these people mm -hmm. just sitting there and uh he came by and he was like yeah did you hear about some guy some you know heavy metal guy was murdered or whatever and i was like I, I was like, damn, I don't have any idea what he's talking about. And he's like, yeah, something, dime, something. And I was like, what? Like, well, you know, at that point, it's like, whoa, 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 what are you saying? You know? And, like, this was kind of even before, like, cell phones and shit, too, or whatever. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. Like, you didn't have, like, the instant, like, oh, yeah, the pull it up. speed or whatever, yeah. The sweet irony of some 75-year-old mall walker <laughs> pointing that out to a young Ross yeah. who couldn't have been more deep in all things fucking metal back in the day. Oh, I'm sorry, dude. Uh, that could have been an MTV news update, maybe too. I don't oh, know. oh, that dude, it was you big news. I mean, fucking Look, Kurt Loader jumping yeah. in there. Yeah. Hi, I'm Kurt yeah. Loader. Yeah. That yeah, get that too. Kurt Loader with MTV news. <laughs> Did you guys Not watch uh, this fucking uh, uh, the documentary on Woodstock '99? Yeah, started. I started to. I started to. Yeah, you remember that shit when it was going on though? Like I was watching it. Obviously, I wasn't there, but watching it on MTV, like holy fuck, yes, yeah. that's wild. So they had, uh, I believe that's when they had pay per view, and you could uh, buy it through pay per view. I remember yeah. being over Dave's. Uh, actually, speaking of Dave Stark, but yeah, they had it on pay per view. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, that's what a bunch of the craziness and, uh, was because you could do anything on there. Yeah, and uh, Dave Stark, his mother, rest in peace. Um, she rented it and we watched a bunch of it through the whole weekend and it was and then there was a bunch of That's dumb huge. shit too like we wanted to watch like the shit that was happening whatever it was i think it was like corn right mm -hmm. was that who was playing like corn yeah, they were one of biscuit. Had, like, limp yeah. biscuit i think yeah so um but then they had like i don't want to watch fucking cheryl crow and shit bro. Like, yeah but well that was one of the things dude the mix of James people they had yeah, yeah James Brown and shit was there. Was like, yeah it's crazy yeah, man, it's just like if you're gonna just book a bunch of fucking crazy ass metal bands of that era and like expect, but, like it was wild because like they like there was no water. They took everybody's water and all that. Like, did you catch all that? I didn't they, catch like, that. I only they, seen like, the first like ten. They years fucking like uh, confiscated your water as you were going in. Just confiscated everything. So like, and then the water started off at like four bucks a bottle for like one of these bottles. That's a ninety nine. And these kids have no money. Yeah. So, like, nobody had any water. It was, like, 110 degrees on the fucking tarmac out there. Oh, yeah, because it was the airport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Such a kind of perfect and shitty microcosm, right? Like, you take the dichotomy of original Woodstock and just, like, throwing it in the field for the fuck of it. Like, totally for the people. Everybody just doing their thing, you know, just love and freedom and all that stuff. And then, like, yeah. Go ahead and give me every piece of water and food you got. You can go ahead and grab a five dollar bottle back there. It's some bullshit, man. That's fucked, man. Yeah. No, it was a pretty good documentary though. I enjoyed it. Didn't they fuck up a bunch of shit though? Did they go crazy and just smash a bunch of shit? Yeah, that's, that's how. That's fire, that's like, kind of how it all goes down. Right? Cause like it basically like it was just the worst experience. Then they start price gouging. Water gets up to twelve dollars a bottle. 
Um, the bathrooms just, were like non-existent. The trash service was non-existent. It was just this fucking like hellscape. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, and it's also of this era of like they're talking about. It, it was very like you know, Limp Biscuit and Cornish. It was very bro like frat boy like you know like yeah. dudes with their shirts off and yeah. their hats backwards. Yeah. Just like, and I mean like you know, and there's tons yeah. of naked chicks running around and like girls are getting raped oh, and like geez. it was just yeah, it's not a good scene. Extra yeah. extra douchey crew all the way around. Oh, man, it was yeah. such a fucking shit show. Well, that's that's when you started. Uh, that's when like the fucking jocks and weirdo like preppy kids and shit started liking like almost hard rock because then yeah. it was like rap involved. So yeah. then they started branching yeah. over to that and then they were like yeah. thought they were hard. It's like the same shit. It was you all know. on Total Request Live. You're right, yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's Carson Daly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But at the same token, like, <clears throat> let me ask you, like, are you you're familiar with? Uh, obviously, everybody's familiar with Slipknot, but like. I don't think they get enough credit from bridging the gap back to like metal. I felt like they right. took what Corn and Lip Biscuit and all that rap rock shit for yeah. a long time. Even Slayer started going weird on like Diablo some Musica and all that. Like, <clears throat> I feel like Slipknot kind of made it back heavier again to right. the metal and that kind of helped make a resurgence of metal. And then like Kill Switch and all that shit started coming out. So like. I don't know. I just think like Slipknot deserves a lot of credit from taking that weird Woodstock '99 mm-hmm. shit to new metal. Yeah, back to like getting heavier at Ozfest and you know bigger metal bands resurfacing and shit like that. Like, yeah, that's true. That's I, true. You know, yeah, they were definitely sort of a, and it's interesting too because of the longevity they've had too because they you know are kind of of an era whereas you know the costumes and you know there was like. 10 other bands doing this kind of thing but they really broke out of that and were like they're still the ones that are out there doing it you know and like yeah they i mean they have huge respect like people fucking love slipknot you know yeah so and a couple lineup changes there through the years and shit too did a couple guys pass away the drummer or something yeah the drummer passed away the bass player passed away yeah and then the new drummer is uh max weinberg's kid yeah jay jay yeah. weinberg no shit yeah Oh, Jesus. Um, so my wife, Susan, who you just met over there painting, she's from Iowa and right oh. there where they're from. And they used to come in. She worked at an art store there and they used to come in and buy art supplies for their masks when they were oh, first no, starting no. to make their masks, like originally when they were starting out. So they'd be like, yeah, I need paint. You know, we're in a band. And they're like, yeah, okay. You know? <laughs> yeah. That's cool as fuck, though. Yeah, it's pretty cool. funny. Uh, Dave Matthews rolled in there one time on it too. Really? He was like on tour or something. Yeah. <laughs> he was like in there buying like a sketchbook or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Cool. yeah. Hey, did you guys ever hear the story? This just happened. It was like the anniversary of about the Dave Matthews bus that dumped all that shit all over all those people. Yeah, I heard I uh, somebody talking about it. No. I heard somebody <laughs> talking about it. Maybe it was on the last podcast on the left. Maybe they were talking about it, but yeah. So the story is... Uh, the Dave Matthews Van bus is happening like 2011 or something like that. Okay. It, on August 8th, was rolling through Chicago and they like stopped on the Chicago River or something and they like opened their bus's shit tank and were gonna like drain it into the river <laughs> off, of, off a bridge. Like off a bridge. You're right. And there was a fucking passenger crew, like an open passenger cruise ship, like Chicago River cruise to, you know, like daily tour thing or oh uh, jesus christ there and all that fucking it was like eight, uh, 800 pounds of fucking carter buford and, <laughs> <laughs> cats and dave madden's man boy tinsley right all their boy shit tinsley. fucking spilled all over those motherfuckers little stefan lafleur or whatever that yeah. cat's name was that bass player that's one of my favorite bass players that <laughs> the kid will that was probably like all vegan food <laughs> <laughs> No. In oh fairness, he's God. from South Africa, right? So no. shit's probably common fair over there. He's like, throw it over the edge, get it in the fucking ocean. It's all good. <laughs> all whole foods. That's why I waited. <laughs> I caught those guys one time, and like I was always a pretty big Dave Matthews fan, and it was a real disappointment though, because I caught them inside a fucking Wings State or not Wings Stadium, but uh, Red Wings Arena back in the day. Where, uh, Joe, Joe Lewis. Lewis, yeah. But you don't want to see those guys indoors. You know, it's kind of the quintessential fucking jam band hippie like gotta see him outdoors smoking right. a joint type yeah. thing so not the best venue but yeah, uh, they were good were they good though yeah i mean they yeah. fucking play their asses off right as musicians and players yeah. they're fucking money across the board each one of those guys you know? yeah i know they're top-notch players all of them there was the big i remember reading the story when they were first starting to get popular for crash you know right off the bat 
that uh that kid playing bass for him was like 14 or some shit uh yeah. when they so we had to sneak him into bars to play shows because he wasn't even old enough to get in you know it was like uh the uh they were trying to get some bass player and he didn't want to do it and he was like his student okay like, yeah my student he can fill in and play or whatever but to that guy's like fuck <laughs> could have made a billion dollars yeah. you know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's still one of the top grossing touring acts out there the guy that passed up the opportunity is under the table and steaming <laughs> hey yo hey yo <laughs> It's weird though. I, I don't know how you guys feel about this, but uh, like music around the digital age when everything started becoming streaming and everything, I felt like that happened a lot to a lot of the shit that I even listened to. Like, I just like, are they still putting out stuff? I don't yeah. know. I kind of lost. And then you start listening to podcasts and books on tape and mm -hmm. all these other things, all these other mediums that became popular. And it's yeah. like, even some of my favorite bands put out two or three cds and i never even just went and listened to them right. or bands that i really liked and shit you know what we I mean? are torn in ten thousand different directions right, right? Yeah, and to yeah. your point like you've got every fucking yeah. source of media media here and streaming this and streaming that it's like you lose track you can't keep your eye on all those balls you know yeah and there's so many bands so that's the other thing you know you you like so many shit or so many different types of music or different bands you just kind of forget where to start to even listen to the shit that's why i feel sometimes it's hard yeah. to get like the thing i find is it's like increasingly difficult to get exposed to new bands slash groups or what have you you know outside of the norm like it's always hey tools putting out a new album you know and it's the fallback shit you've been listening to for years but there's just too much stuff to keep up on so like how do you go about finding new music even these days yeah really, finding you know? new acts is hard I'm yeah still able to keep up on like like i know like megadot's putting out a new album like i mean typically up on <laughs> exactly but, like, you know it's like <laughs> but that old man factor new, kicks in you know? and you just kind of fall out of the loop and it's like yeah eh, back in mm -hmm. my you know I think maybe that happens to everybody, but it's harder yeah. than ever now because it's not like a thing where it was like an album is coming out and it's like an event, you yeah. know? Now it's like, it's all singles and like, I mean like younger acts and, and shit, you know? Like, I mean, you know, you're kind of, I mean like the kind of hip hop shit you do is, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's more like, do you ever get into more of the pop aspect of the hip hop kind of shit? You know what I mean? Or what What you're doing is more like hardcore hip-hop. Right? It's kind of more like the strange music type yeah. bars and shit like that. But yeah. it just depends on what kind of artists I work with. But most of it's more more like underground hip-hop shit, I would right. say. Right, You yeah. know, it's not the uh, a lot of the auto-tune kind of right. pop songs yeah. or, you know, female rappers, which is a big thing now. Yeah. You know, that kind of shit. Yeah. That's what I'm saying is, like, that shit is, like, I can't even, like... It literally is, it's all the same. Yeah. I'm just like, okay, like, you know, like, the, and it's all, everything's just so like, it's like, okay, it's just like drag and drop. Like it, like, it's just like a basic trap beat. Like, I don't know. I don't, it's like I don't anything else, man. It gets homogenized and you yeah. figure out the formula and it's boom, boom, yeah, boom. Man. And this is going to make X amount of dollars, you know? That's exactly, yeah. um, I was, there's two things I was going to say to that point. One, uh, I heard that like 80% of music that's released now is not mastered. So if that goes to tell you anything that everybody's releasing so much fucking music and mm -hmm. just whatever, like, oh, you made a song today? Cool, we just put it on all sorts right. of platforms because we right. pay $20 a month or whatever. But also with that, I guess there's even this book out, and um, I was listening to this podcast that I listen to all the time, uh, The Ultimate Recording Machine Podcast. Yeah. And it's all about producers and shit like that. But they, yep. had, they had like a songwriter's month, and they were talking about what you had just brought up was the fact that like there's an actual thing called like the nashville number system that they literally just have this fucking formula and it's like boom 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 we're mm -hmm. at the chorus by this time and then it's the three choruses and then the last one this is how we transition into it and then it breaks off and then we have these two other options for these other types of songs and that's pretty much yeah. it yeah. And, and a lot of people follow that because at the end of the day you know if, if you're a musician like you're still only like what 20 percent of the audience at the end of the day so mm -hmm. it's like weird when you're a musician and you look at everything like that or a creator you know and kind of know what it takes to go into it and shit but like most people are just people well it's such an odd thing like yeah it's like yeah. as long as they got a little catchy melody or something like, yeah ah, there's you know going through but there's things, such a weird thing yeah melody, you know? like you take this thing that's like purely 
in just an art form, right? In the highest se- or definition of the term, this is art. And then you take it and you apply analytics and you break it down and you apply economics and everything else. And then it just kind of becomes this distilled version of what it should be. It's a commodity yeah. instead of an, an art. Yeah. And now that you can't really sell it either, like you used to be able to sell albums. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, even back in the day, like say what you will about record companies, but they were kind of the gatekeepers. Like they were like, this is what you will listen to, yeah. you know, so not as much music was coming out. And that's why everybody used to want to want to have a record deal, right? Yeah. I, I've made that same argument a bunch of times. Like, you know, everything was like, well, we don't need record labels anymore and shit. But now it's like, well, now there's so much shit. And like at least like record people were like they you know the A and R people and whatever were like you know these guys are sweet like this right. will become a thing right like these guys are amazing and you know that's why we have bands that we still listen to now because they were so excellent and now it's like you're saying it's like there's so much shit that nobody wants to even try to listen right. in a way or whatever like yeah. you can't find the good stuff because it takes so long to wade through it all yeah. well it goes back to your point about whatever you know. X percent of things are mastered now versus the old days. It's like you're cutting out the middleman. You're also cutting out some of that production value, and it's yeah. you know straight to market, which is cool in one sense because you yeah. can do your thing and like you might get a chance that you otherwise wouldn't have. But if it's some subpar bullshit product, like okay, there's more crap out there. Awesome. And you know, at that at that time, then it's just kind of like you got to take it upon your own hands to like build something with it. You know, but yeah. Uh, yeah. But man, if your music shit like. It's probably not, you're probably not going to be able to get the other shit down either. <laughs> right, right. Also, what I wanted to ask, because th- this has been on my mind, I, I asked earlier, where were you when you found out Dimebag Daryl was killed? But I was also wondering, do you remember where you were uh, when you found out Michael Jackson was dead? You guys remember that at all? Um, 100%. Dude. Go, go. Yeah, go ahead, bro. All right, so to start the day, we were at a Detroit Tiger Chicago Cubs game, which was punishingly hot, dude. It's like 97 degrees. We got dog shit seats because we we're just out of college, some poor motherfuckers. So up there hanging out. And that was the morning of the uh, Carnival of Chaos show oh, yeah. where you guys played that whole weekend. <laughs> so heard that cruising back from the game on the way to Carnival of Chaos, which is a fucking story in and of itself up what, there. That whole scene, that by the way. Day? He- he died that Pretty day. certain, man, yeah. Damn. Gotta fact check or me might, on this. It might have been like this could be a crisscross situation. Yeah. I might be dead wrong, but I'm pretty certain it was that day, man. I got a text from Brandon Boone, and I was on my way with my dad to a fucking <laughs> to Carnival of Chaos oh. because I was going with Brandon Boone. I'm telling you, it was the okay. day, man. Uh, maybe it was earlier or something, but because he and I were going to get some food or something. Do you guys you ever go to the PETA place on uh, Apple? You ever catch I bet. Yeah. yeah. So that's where we were going, and they had a fucking projector on the wall, like a huge thing to play their news and shit. Like instead of having a TV, they had a projector to oh. play it on the wall. And I remember we were just sitting there watching that shit, fucking eating pitas, and we were like pulling his body out. <laughs> 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 oh shit! Yeah, we're like, holy shit! Michael Jackson's dead. Yeah, this shit was out of control, man. I have no memory of that. I have no memories. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing too many brace cells. I, I just don't pay attention to shit like that. Maybe I just was like, yeah. I mean, there's certain ones that, to me, like the Michael Jackson one, is almost like a fucking like where were you when Kennedy was shot yeah. or something. You know, like that's a that was a big one because. People forget how fucking even then how huge Michael Jackson was. You know, I mean, at that point he wasn't what he was ten, fifteen years before that. But like, that was the fucking whole thing. You know? Yeah, he was. Uh, you have those artists that transcended. He was just one of those artists that transcended. I mean, he's the greatest you know, along the way. You know, the Elvis, the Michael yeah. Jackson, yeah, yeah. the Eminem. The you know, there's just a few that stick out. The Drake. You know, that's kind of the guy now that just sells more than everybody. It's just got this mass popular popularity. Mm-hmm. And he was definitely one of those guys. Because, like, everybody still, even with whatever accusations, they're still like, when a Michael Jackson song song, it's like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Fuck, yeah. There's nothing. I mean, <laughs> he's got to be the greatest entertainer of all time, is yeah. he not? If you're picking one man, like, who are you going to put above MJ? That's the question. Like, I watched this uh, Is there anybody? of him doing, I don't think so. Oh. The singing, the dancing, yeah. you'd fucking during his prime. It just incredible, it went man. so bad after <laughs> after a while. I got you know went poorly for him. But I watched this thing. He he got sued 
by a guy who was claiming that he wrote Thriller. All right, so Michael Jackson had to like go to court and defend himself against this guy, okay? And it happened in Mexico, and so he's in this Mexican court, and it's Michael Jackson, you know, the face, everything. This is all messed, you know. And he's like, he's, he's like, like clearly on fucking, shit. he's melting, and he's yeah. on like pain meds and shit, like all yeah. the time. But he's sitting there and he's talking about how he's he writes songs, and he's he's talking about like, no, I wrote that song, it just. So this and the lawyer's like, well, how do you how do you write a song? And he's like, so usually I just the drums start like this, and then it's French horns, and he's doing it. And you're like, but like I swear to God, guys, I was like, oh my God, I was like, this guy is music. Yeah. Like when he was going through that, I was just like, holy shit. And he's like, and then the vocal line, and it like comes in, and it's like a lot of people can do that, but the way that he was doing it, like it was like perfect. And I was like, holy shit. He's like, and then I just give the demo to Quincy and he liked it and then we just did the song. You know, or whatever. And you're just like, holy fuck, like that was Yeah, then they find the players to play it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you could tell. You could tell. Like, even being all fucked up like you said he was or whatever, like he that still was him all mm -hmm. the way to the core. That was who he I who he was as a person, how he identified was that fucking, yeah. you know, just music. I mean, you know, his upbringing too, like the militant mm -hmm. fucking practice schedule from the time yeah, he was dude. fucking born, you know, yeah. so obviously that was like just subconsciously burned into him, but yeah. then obviously it was something he still enjoyed and made a fucking dick ton of money. Well, it's like 50 years perfecting your craft, right? What was yeah. he when he passed away? 52, 52 56 or something like that. Yeah. So, I mean, that's an entire lifetime of mm -hmm. just honing one specific craft and doing it better than anyone well, in that movie, had or has ever done it. Right? Uh, what was it? This is this is it, right? Yeah, the movie where yeah. he died or whatever. But he's like, they like fuck up or whatever. The band like fucks up, but it was like because they like cut eight bars or something. And he's like, he was like, where did those eight bars go? It was like actually kind of intimidating, you know. And he's like, yeah, sorry, Michael. Uh, the music director told us to cut that or whatever. He's like, this is why we rehearse. This is why we rehearse. <laughs> I was like, damn, dude. <laughs> he took that shit serious too, yeah, though, man. Yeah. I, don't, I mean, respect on that. Apparently, he knew, wow. like, every song, every one of his songs, he knew, like, the tempo, the key, like, like yeah. just, like, encyclopedically, like, you know. But I also, um, I, I heard Rogan say something about how, like, there was, uh, you know, you he has those accusations against him, right? But I heard Rogan say something about there was rumor or... Uh, the doctor that killed him or whatever said that he yeah. was actually chemically castrated. Did yep. you hear about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I subscribe. So, to that. Yeah, so it's I mean, probably accurate. So that's that's the take on that too. You know, I mean, I I don't know. Yeah. Never, well, I mean, I I, that, it makes whatever. a lot of sense. Uh, I mean, everything the evidence looks that way, and why would that guy be saying that? And like, I mean, he's just he's tiny. His voice is obviously super high. Yeah, which part of that high, is yeah. uh, part of that was on purpose. Like that's even part of why he started doing nose jobs. Oh, um, like nasally. And he also talked that thing. Like it's a known thing. Like if you want to sing higher, talk higher all the time because you just are kind of like exercising your voice in a different uh, thing. That said, he was clearly like I mean he was a hundred pounds. You know, no testosterone at all. And I think a lot of that is what led into his whole fascination with being friends with little boys and then running that into like essentially a confusion, a sexuality confusion of like, you know, you're chemically castrated. You don't have that. Uh, well, in a lot of ways, you're a small child in a grown man's world, right? Like if yeah. that aspect of your life is cut off and you don't go through all those fucking progressions, like. And I think he just got confused like sexually and these these boys are like his best friends right. but it was also like a confusing thing for him like i don't know that's my best guess on that <laughs> and i also think there was probably other influence like whatever you know he was probably on some drugs for a long while yeah dealing oh with yeah depression and all yeah. kind of different shit so well it started when he know. uh burned his fucking head yeah. at the yep. pepsi thing yep. yep and it was all downhill from there but we did that uh um me and Bubba did that podcast about Michael Jackson. Uh, this this buddy of mine and Buddy Shaves too that we actually lived with. We produced this like seventeen hour long documentary podcast about Michael Jackson. No and shit. I produced just the like I did the production. 
he did all the uh, the actual like podcasts, like, like research, the and research things, yeah. and he interviewed essentially literally everybody except for the actual accusers, like the couple of kids. But he interviewed lawyers on both sides. Oh no shit! Sure. Um, yeah, it was. I mean, it was pretty legit. Uh, we actually got kind of fat paid to do it too. It was on. The, you guys heard the Luminary podcast network? Yeah. Oh yeah. It was. It was one of their first shows. It was like they had like four original shows, and right when they launched, but they didn't promote it at all. But uh, <laughs> but it was so like. Thinking, I'm just thinking about it now. I was like, listen to a lot of people talking a lot of you know it was people is for and against and like oh he was definitely doing shit to kids yeah. and other people he's definitely not doing shit to kids and just like man it was it was pretty wild he talked to like mj's a lawyer and all that shit and like damn he he, he went after it. uh we had was it al sharpton who's the guy oh yeah 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 was yeah. on there holy shit uh, yeah that's wild yeah, man. So it's kind of just like mm, you kind of don't know where to land on right. that. Like yeah, something yeah, was yeah. definitely not right here. Yeah, you something's know? not right. But at the same time, it's and it's hard to pass judgment if you don't know. And, and you, you gotta say really too, he was there. acquitted in court. And you're yeah. like, well, you you weren't on that jury. You know, there was right. a, there's a reason right. why. So I don't yeah. know. Who knows? But goddamn, those are good songs. Yeah. Besides, <laughs> besides the fact, you know. I mean, you know. It's weird. It's <laughs> weird because you know people still listen to R. Kelly on that too. So you know. Oh yeah. That's fucking weird too. And he was accused of all that stuff. And yeah. And not near as good as Michael Jackson. Yeah, not even. Indeed. <laughs> that motherfucker was weird, weird, bro. Yeah. I think uh, at some point though, like all the artists, they're all a little off the rocker in some way or another. That's probably true. Probably all of us artists. Somewhere yeah, that's probably. <laughs> that's kind of what makes us. It takes a special breed to do that thing and do it well, man. Like, sanity is not necessarily a prerequisite, right? Like, well, gotta you be a little fucked up. Any of the R. Kelly documentaries or anything? I, I really I didn't. Seen it. Yeah. yeah, surviving R. Kelly. Right? Yeah, it was a little much, but right. it was just fucking weirdo. It was everything, a little much. Yeah, <laughs> everything you kind of heard or think you know, you it's probably what it is. You know what I'm saying? You don't need to watch. <laughs> yeah. I killed it real quick into it, honestly. I started up in like 15, 20 Dude. minutes. I was like, oh, this is just going down a real dark hole. I don't care to be in person. Yeah, yeah, man. yeah it's, it's, yeah, he, uh, a lot of little girls, man, mm. like 13, 14 year old girls and shit. Like, he would like try to get them in the studio to sing and stuff. And right. Then, and then he would just pretty much like try to dominate them. It's fucked up, man. You get that abuse of power and you get people in that position where they're icons and you're looking up to them and you've got all that aspect and you fucking capitalize on that. It's some sketchy shit, man. It's a real dark place to go down for sure. But I'm not I'm not positive, but if I do remember correctly, um, we've already went over this. My memory fucking sucks. So uh, he might have had some shit happen to him when he was a kid yeah no uh excuses but usually yeah, that's yeah. the case anyway Yep. and that's always kind of you know that's usually the pattern something like that you know so i believe that's kind of what they went over at a little bit later in that no excuses but it's just yep. weird how that well the percentage of people that are involved with that as yeah. adults like to you know mm -hmm. that had that happen to them when they're little it's yeah. you know ridiculous it's just weird how it's just like it just keeps going you know Damn. So. Wow, well, it's really a lively conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we went from Michael Jackson. <laughs> yeah. Bunch yeah. of fucking creepos, man. Because I remember I saw you guys. It was Infinite Design, I think. It was at the intersection. I think it was maybe it was a heavyweights thing or something. Um, did like your brother play in the band for a minute or something? Yeah, okay, that's yeah. what it was, and I remember watching you guys on the on the floor, and like watching your guys' fucking hands, like those fucking wrists, because you, you were doing a lot of sweeps and shit, and like yeah. just being like, Jesus <laughs> Christ, man, these guys are out of control. Yeah, uh, I never got the good at like sweep picking and that those kind of techniques, you yeah. know. So that stuff to me is always kind of just like, damn, that's fucking wow. Yeah, it was one of those things too. It's like you kind of look back and like, yeah, I could have probably played it cleaner, but like we really pushed each other. Like my brother got in the band and he's a bit younger than me, like nine years difference. Mm -hmm. But he was kind of just starting to play guitar, but he picked it up very quickly. Yeah. So um, 
he was in the band for a while and it was just cool but at that time like when we first started we just wanted to write the craziest weirdest yeah. riff fucking salad shit that we could right. like whatever so it, a lot of it made no sense but it was cool to us so right but that's what i was saying is that was the lane you were in that yeah, was yeah. the point it was yeah, it supposed to be crazy and, yeah, yeah like yep. you know just technique yeah. and yeah you know yeah precision fast you know? did you like uh dillinger escape plan oh yeah yeah, they yeah. reminded me somewhat of that. I never got super yeah. huge into those guys either, but uh tell you what, that fucking dude, the singer, Greg. uh, he's got solo albums. You yeah. ever heard of solo albums? Yeah, they're great. Holy fuck, they are great. They yeah. are fucking great. It's so, I was like, holy shit, where did this guy he's doing this? Like what? So, so he was also just singing on tour for Jerry Cantrell. Yes. And um he's also in a band called that he plays guitar and sings in with the bass player from Mastodon. Dude, killer be killed. Yeah. That's how I. That's, that's fucking dude, awesome. Dude. I was dude. preaching that. I was. Yeah. I was going, dude. This Killer Be Killed album. It's like yeah. this is like the metal album of the year. They're the fucking sick, dude. dude and the, their newest one, because I think they yeah. got two albums now. Yeah. The, the, this latest one is just like, damn, this is fucking dope. But damn, that guy can sing yeah, too, man. Holy great. shit. I mean, they can all. That's a great. Yeah. That's a great lineup. So the thing about Dillinger is like when they first started, they were more along the lines of just like that crazy spazzy yes. fucking yeah. like almost jazzy and then they break down in that mm -hmm. weird ass. Yeah, just, and yeah. then but then when they did that album when their singer left and then they did the album with Mike Patton. Did you okay. hear that ever? I know I didn't. I, that, I remember that. So happening. but that is fucking incredible. Like right. the, the so then they kind of faced this weird position where it's like, oh shit, we had Mike Patton on a record and then our old shit's all weird like this and then then greg he joined the band and then they had this whole other right. element to him where then they started doing more like singy stuff because he yeah. could sing yeah but he was still fucking crazy in yeah. that band like jumping off shit yeah. like them guys jumped off their like yeah i seen them with the faceless at the intersection and like every show they've ever played is just all out balls yeah and nuts, jumping yeah. around swinging guitars just we caught Dillinger one time. They who the fuck did they open for? Was yeah. it Coheed? Maybe did they open for Coheed? Well, yeah, or am I just mixing they, that? Because no, no, the no, drummer they, did he yeah. play with both? Or am no, I totally he, making that? But up? That's how they knew each other. Okay, they toured together, and then yeah, that drummer from Dillinger Escape Plan quit Dillinger Escape Plan and joined Coheed and yeah. Cambria. Remember yep. that? Yep. Yeah, which was a bit of a weird. Was, I mean, you know, never liked like that outside. marriage particularly. Yeah, it was a little weird. I never got super into Dillinger, but like the closest thing to Dillinger I did get into super hard for two years was Fall of Troy. I had a really big Fall of Troy period where I just felt like it's kind of a younger Dillinger, sort like of, not yeah, quite the same thing, but a little rock. same. Yeah, similar vein, but different. Yeah, and just that it was like super fast, crazy technical. Yeah, uh, but that Dillinger hard. drummer playing with Kohi was just like kind of bad news from the show. Like, he right, play right, his ass right. off, obviously, but fit wise, like talking about chemistry and stuff earlier. Yeah, that did not yeah. seem to be it. Yeah. <laughs> At least you know. Yeah, man, kill it, be killed though. Yeah. Huge, huge album. Yep. Uh, I, when I first heard that, I was like, man, this is fucking great. And then I haven't spent enough time with the newest record that I probably should have. Yeah. But uh, I have listened to it a few times. But I'll get I'll get into it more. I do want to spend some time with that dude's solo record though. Yeah. I like more of it. It's but, fantastic. But yeah. Yeah, I need to listen to it again too. Um, but dude, it's fucking good. But uh, that killer be killed on like the last song is like. Get the fuck out of here. Well, getting back to just the rocking <laughs> thing and just like a good fun album, but still technically yeah. well done, but not crazy over the top. Yeah. Like it's just fun. Like it kind of feels like an old school throwback, fucking just hard rock. Like yeah, you just listen to it and go, yeah, this fucking yeah, kicks ass, you know? Yep, exactly. It just kicks ass, man. Like the production is great on it, but it's not overly done. But it's like good mm -hmm. riffs, hooks, singing. Like and then it's cool with all three of those guys doing yeah. the vocals too. Like so. Yep. I, I like a lot of people like shit their pants about Mastodon too like and they made a big deal about them like when they first came out and like I was kind of into them but then I watched a few like when I got COVID I was laid up so I just sat there and watched a bunch of YouTube documentaries of uh, like all like different anything I could find of like studio people in the studio or making of or whatever and I watched a Mastodon one and I just like kind of started liking those guys a little more and started getting into their stuff you yeah. know what I mean sometimes it takes like liking the musician first like uh -huh. periphery like a lot of people love those guys and i just kind of was like whatever they sound like a degent yeah. like thank you man you know? yeah well, they, i mean he but, invented the word gent yeah <laughs> but then i started watching all their content and shit they started yeah. putting all these behind the scenes stuff out hey this is how we do this this is how yeah. we make this and started helping people and then it's like 
all right, these guys are kind of fucking yeah. cool because I kind of like them as people. So that's so always kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. Music, you know yeah. what I mean? So kind of sometimes you had to bridge that gap mm-hmm. the other. But like we're in this world now where it's like you used to just hear the music for what it was, but now it's like you almost kind of like the person first yeah. and what they stand for first, yeah. and then you get into the well, art afterwards. Yeah. That was a cool thing when I caught Mastodon because I think that was my first exposure to him was live. And it was like, all right, you know, this is just a fun fucking rock show. You know, mm-hmm. I didn't have a lot of the radio stuff. It wasn't like, oh, here's mm-hmm. some XYZ, like generic radio song we're gonna put off that's gonna you know hit the biggest population or whatever so caught those guys live and just wailed those fucking fun show man it's I, a good old fashioned uh, fun show Misha, though. oh yeah yeah I got a selfie with him that's cool got a hand job for him <laughs> <laughs> uh, Misha Misha uh, shout out to Bulb he calls himself Bulb or whatever but he actually coined the word gem but that was always their whole thing was like they started on MySpace and it was just like being like a, almost like more of a personality and then he kind yeah. of put that band together and just all these killer people and whatever um i've seen mastodon probably like six times or oh really i'm not like a super fan but um i'm a fan for sure and uh they are always just playing with all the other bands that i am huge fans yeah. of. that's right in my wheelhouse so it's always mastodon and opeth or whatever that yeah. was the last show i saw uh in detroit was opeth and mastodon playing and dude mastodon fucking slayed we were both like oh my god they are firing on all cylinders because that new record's huge great record and it was really well received you know and uh so they're just kind of like on a high and they're just like just firing on all cylinders everybody's healthy um you know they're just like i think the one guitarist dude like quit drinking even and shit so you know they're just like and we were just like, oh, holy fuck. Because I've always kind of like hated, not hated, but I've, I've always been a bit of a hater on the drummer and his style to me. Too much. Uh, it's a little too much, and it's always kind of, he always kind of plays like the same fills yeah. over and over. But man, I mean like, but mad props. I mean, he's fucking great. Yeah. What can I say? It's not like he's, obviously he's a fucking great drummer, but. In general, though, man, like, I love me some Mastodon, but also they're not exactly reinventing the wheel tune wise. You know, Mastodon's yeah. pretty much down, or Mastodon's pretty, you know, it's down the middle. It is what it is, you know. So, yeah. like, a little bit of Mastodon goes a long way. So, yeah. But, yeah. I, like, I, I only feel like you, how. How could you not always kind of play the same thing? Like are you gonna come up with that many yeah. fucking different drum fills? One hundred percent. One hundred percent. I'm not. Yeah, yeah. You're totally right. No, I'm not. I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just saying yeah. like that style leads uh-huh. to like that. Okay, you could do that for so long, but like the where the creativity like ends is where like how many times can you yeah. do like. E- you know how many fucking yeah. songs you got now? Seventy songs, exactly. and you're doing the yeah. Every fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, you are a drummer. You only got five options. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You only got so many drums you can hit. Right. So if that's your style, like fuck, man. He is a preposterously tall man. I didn't meet him, but I ran into him outside of the intersection. He was out there walking around one of the shows and. He's super tall. He's yeah. a tall dude. And uh, like that's why he's got that kind of like... Because he sings all the time now, too. And he's got that like kind of like piping kind of voice. Yeah, he know? um he writes most all of that shit, too. Yeah, all the, all the lyrics and everything. Yeah, yeah. But like the, he help, I mean, he works with the other guys and puts the vocal patterns and stuff together. But yeah. most of that is driven by him. And I didn't know that, either. I didn't know he was such an... In- yeah, you know, integral he, part. Yeah, of he's that definitely kind of thing. like, a, especially like logistically or whatever, you know. But uh, the fucking uh, the dude though is Bill Kelleher, man. The guy, the only guy that doesn't sing. He's the guy who actually writes most of those songs. Yeah, like, like the, the riffs, riffs and, shit, and yeah. all that shit. Yeah, like it's all coming from him. And like that dude's a fucking beast on yeah. the guitar, man. First time, well, maybe like the second time I saw him when I was watching, because again, he doesn't get the props because he's not singing yeah. or whatever in a way. But I was watching, and I was like, oh, that's the guy. Like, I called it, yeah. man. I was like, that's the guy who's fucking yeah. crushing it. He's like, I don't need to sing. Indeed. <laughs> My riffs are so yeah, huge. Yeah, I the rest of this shit. We saw Mastodon yeah. once. Uh, you might have even been there, uh, Shay, man. That he fucking, uh, that guy uh, had been, like, flown out to the hospital that day with, like, paint, or, uh, what the fuck's the shit that explodes in your stomach? Your fucking, not your pancreas, your, uh, Appendix. Yeah. Oh, appendix yeah, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Some shit like that. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, the point is he wasn't there. And they so it was just the three of them. And they came out and they're like, Here, here's what's going on. Our guitarist is out. He's sick. He's in the hospital. But we kind of decided, like, show must go on. 
and uh, like the dude from High on Fire came out and did like three songs with him. He like learned them like that day, and he's just they're just like, sorry, don't know what to tell you. We're just gonna play our songs and just like so it was just it was weird, you know. It's cool. Huh? Yeah, Fuck, the show must go on. Gotta throw it down, yeah. yeah. Like, yep. Give the old college try, regardless. Yeah, I've seen Mastodon a fucking bunch of times, and uh, to finish up on that is my favorite album of theirs is Crack the Sky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's definitely the one, and yeah. it has that video to it, which you know is kind of like I've been trying to do all that shit myself. Always just have like the video that goes along with it and stuff, and it's just so awesome. And uh, I saw them do that show with. Uh, uh, Death Clock <laughs> uh, uh, in Detroit, and that was of all the concerts I've ever seen. That was the loudest concert I've ever been at. The kick drums were like painful, like f like the sub of it, like in your chest, like the physicalness of the sound was like. We were like three rows back, and we were like, holy fucking like like both of you guys. I've seen a lot of concerts, you know, and like and we were just like, this is like ridiculous. But it was also a fucking amazing show. Both those bands absolutely crushed it that show. Clock disc. Yeah, it's Gene Holman, yeah. And and Death Clock played first, so that yeah. was the uh those kick drums. Oh yeah, about. that's like, fucking oh. just <laughs> yeah. That's where you gotta like uh side chain that sub when the motherfuckers are beating that yeah. fast sometimes because if not it's just too overbearing. Yep. Yeah, it was dumb. Alright, shit man, we got any fucking any news we can talk about here? Get this bad boy booted up here. <laughs> Cue the sounder. <laughs> we got it. And go. <laughs> the Dangerville Podcast presents News of the World. All right, so we got a story about a drunken hillbilly riding a vehicle in a spot they shouldn't be riding. I'm going to give you one guess at the state, my friend. That's all you're going to need. It's Florida. Of course it's Florida. All right. So a woman arrested for driving a golf cart down the center lane of Florida's busiest interstate <laughs> with a bag bottle of Tennessee fire and whiskey in hand because that's got to be done. So she's reported by a semi-truck driver who, quote, steers her off of the road. Uh -huh. So the uh, the skill of the semi-truck driver can't be fucking overstated, <laughs> right? Like. I Jenny gently guided this 20-pound golf cart to the side of the road, but yeah, the cops pulled their over. She's like, I got to get my bag. I need my bag. And they fucking look inside. And, yeah, and of course, he's shit-faced on that Tennessee wire for whiskey. So. She was getting a, a bag, a bag of weed or something? No, no, like a brown bag covering oh, the, you know, she's oh, referring she to her bag. She's got to get, you know, just straight she out of her mind. She well, license, but she's just trying to drive the golf cart to get the whiskey. Yep. You got to get down to the liquor stuff. Right. I mean, what are you going to do? <laughs> That's fucking sure. hilarious. Did it say what happened to her? She get put in jail or anything? I don't know. It's Florida, man. I would assume <laughs> they just let her go with a slap on the wrist. Or like, yeah, yeah. it is what it is. That's some Florida right shit. Florida people, yeah, dude. Florida <laughs> people be doing Florida things. You know, it's kind of yeah. The cop was like, Mary. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> God we got the council it. meeting on Tuesday. It's going to be, yeah. This is mob. Damn it, mob. <laughs> Get off the golf cart. All right. <laughs> All right. So we got a new restaurant in Beverly Hills opening up. That's an exact replica of the Golden Girls set. It's just pretty awesome, right? So this restaurant's open from 3 in the morning to 1 in the afternoon for the patrons that want to catch a late night meal, you know? Wow. They're specializing in a wide range of easy-to-chew foods. They've got mashed potatoes, really? some puree carries and shit. No, these are all old people zingers. Let's catch up here, Ross. Let's catch up. I got a million of them here. I thought for real. <laughs> <laughs> really serving fucking mashed potatoes. Like. Yeah, I was like, man, that's quite a branding <laughs> thing. Know. The truth is like, the best comedy. I mean, I assume this is all true. I don't know. The uh, the only dessert on the menu is a single Werther's butterscotch <laughs> candy. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what the waitress did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, keeping the uh, keeping the temperature at a brisk eighty five degrees, but they do have a wider range of uh, you know crocheted blankets up in the front to stay warm. So yeah. <laughs> also, true story. There's a Golden Con Festival, a fucking Golden Girls convention yeah. that lives on to this day. This is still a thing. People, man, I do love some Golden Girls, man. Like, uh, one of them was like a gay dude, man. I think in the gay community, the Golden Girls are huge. This is know? a shocking turn of events. Uh, I'm telling you. I want to know if you're bland, if you're a bland, yeah. sure, uh -huh. whatever. <laughs> yep. And uh, superior taste. It was a great show. In fairness, it was a funny fucking show. It's so dude. weird. Uh, all the sub sub genres of fucking everything now. Everybody's got. You know, <laughs> there's like a fucking. 
the knitting group on Reddit, and you know what I mean? It's just like so many things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just a look. bunch of people talking about Golden Girls. Was that, was that <laughs> Betty White <laughs> or whatever? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. yeah. Betty White, the other two. B. Arthur. Yeah, good call. It's a huge pull. Yeah. If you hit this trifecta here, it's going to be more impressive than calling the... Uh, old, old one? I don't know. I don't think so. I think she was the other one. I think she might have been the old one. Maybe, maybe, yeah. yeah. In fairness, they were all pretty old, older. (laughs) They were only like in their 50s or something. They They were old. We were were like 10. Yeah. And they were like, holy shit, they're old. But yeah, because like that's a weird, uh, like, it's probably not an original thought, but like people now in their 50s, they're looking at J-Lo and shit. Yeah. You know, or whatever. It's like that. Jennifer Aniston. (laughs) It's like 55 and they're like... Golden Girl, right? <laughs> no, it's like Jay Z still fucking you know. Indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah dude, Jennifer. Jesus, dude. He's still talking about selling drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Tubby ass gut spilling out of the beater, just like yeah. that. <laughs> All right, so bats infested a Nevada fire station, forcing it to close for the second time in seven years. Man, wow. I can sympathize. Do you remember uh, that big ass greenhouse, that little boot room we had back in the day on a Wall yeah. Street downtown? Like me and uh, you know those other four cats. So. We had that fucking Sir Bats a lot. <laughs> lived out in that little garage and was always flying around. Yeah. I got a bat that's steady attacking me when I go out at night in my garage. She's a real pain in the ass. But anyway. It infested the whole thing. Yeah, dude. Like multiple bats forced the yeah. fire station to close down. And it's apparently wow. a fucking pain in the ass to get well, bats out. Be, like uh, shitting all over in there. Like, yeah, dude. Guano for days. <laughs> yeah. yeah got that guano. <laughs> dude. Selling that guano. Right. Ace Ventura style. <laughs> so it's the fire station you said? Yeah, some fire station. In the bat a like, second time. Is that like who you call to get a bat out of your house? Call the like, other fire yeah, station. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, like, Firehouse <laughs> 42. <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> the calling from their wife's phone, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, with the uh, fire chief station you know, guy, when they asked about it, you know, he said, uh, I want to make firemen more than men, I want to make them a symbol. <laughs> it's my Batman impression. That's my bet. That's good material, right? Solid nice stuff, job. lackluster response. Yeah. Nice job. Commissioner Gordon is unavailable for comment on all this, but all right. So there's an election to fill a vacant seat in the South Carolina Town Council Board. It ended when no one submitted for candidacy. So they're straight doing this, just write in ballots, and then apparently you're on the board, whoever gets the most random write in ballots. So my right. question to you is do you want to move to South Carolina, <laughs> go head to head, and fucking run this town, bro? Uh, yes. You gotta have it, dude. Yes. So you just, I mean, it's like you ever catch those things, uh, like Bodie McBoatface? Never leave anything up to the public. You know <laughs> Huge Johnson wins in a landslide. <laughs> Huge Johnson. <laughs> they had, well, exactly. They had these uh, <laughs> these competition. It was like uh, the like name this boat, whatever gets the most. It was like a huge like government science vessel or something like yeah multi-million dollar project or whatever and it was like this big thing and the top one was you know it's the fucking internet so it was Bodie McBoat <laughs> and there's one now in uh, England that's something about like the eeny, like teeny tiny eeny weeny fucking and it's like a fucking like destroyer or something it's like, <laughs> it's like never leave fucking anything up to the public the internet will just fucking dominate that yeah not a good idea not yeah. a good move dude. <laughs> all right so you were talking about this one i gotta lean on you for this one brother amber heard apparently a multi-million dollar deal to star in an adult oh, film no, they, have you uh, seen this have you heard about this yeah, no they 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 offered her okay multi-million dollars which i'm sure at all i'm sure probably every fucking porn company which she promptly took them. yeah and continue she, oh, she, <laughs> <laughs> she owes johnny a bunch of money yeah. figure out how she's gonna do that because they like Literally, you're gonna take her face out of the fucking Aquaman because <laughs> the, the, the TikTokers are raging. Well, no, I was joking that uh, this this deal, the the fucking thing about the deal, she has to do the porn with Johnny Depp. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> Captain Jack. Amber's turd, a Johnny Depp story, dude. <laughs> she has to take on Johnny Depp in all of his different roles. <laughs> you know, she fucks Jack Sparrow. She fucks up with scissor hands. <laughs> <laughs> Mechanics of that last one seem problematic. Indeed. And the disastrous Indeed. consequences, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I doubt she'd be taking that. 
I don't know, man. She apparently declared for bankruptcy after the trial. I've heard rumors of different shit, man. Like, oh, she had to sell her house. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how much of that shit's true. You know what? You know what really sucks about the whole thing is I remember when I first seen her, I was like, "Holy shit, that girl is hot as hell." I remember every time I seen her in any movie, and then I like went back and watched. uh, What the fuck is that show? My wife watches it all the time. It's like a. they're like FBI profiling agents or whatever. Oh, okay. Mind criminal, mind. criminal minds, yeah. And like every episode's the same. Yeah. Like they always have like the rundown where all seven of them are standing there and they take turns talking. It goes around the room of the, where they crack the code of the killer. It's literally oh, okay. in every yeah. single episode. Oh, yeah. Uh, every yeah. single episode they catch the killer in the act. Getting yeah. back to the formula, man. Uh, formula yeah, works. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Like it's like not a terrible show, but like I always just rag on it so bad because it's just so weird. Like, you know. Starring the husband from Dharma and Greg. Do you, I, you remember that, yeah, cat? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I try not to talk o- over other people, but sometimes you just do. But like when it's a show like that, it's just like camera angle you camera angle you mm-hmm. camera you know, like yeah. it's just everything so like weirdly perfect Process, yeah, like yeah. That. yeah. It's just like, fucking uh, strange. so is she in that yeah. show though so yeah i remember seeing her in that show like uh she was just like in an episode and in that show i remember being like man she's that girl's fucking hot and then i realized yeah. it was her and then i seen her in a few other things then just this year we realized how fucking weird and crazy she was well maybe it was last year but yeah because yeah. rogan was saying that they uh they did some kind of like computer thing this is before all that but they tried to figure out like computer and math wise like who the most beautiful person on earth is or something based on the like symmetry of their face oh yeah, and all yeah. Shit. it's always about the jawline she, she was and it was her like it was whatever i'm sure they ran a hundred celebrities or yeah whatever. so just all yeah. like uh yeah symmetry and uh, yeah, whatever whatever jawline is mm-hmm. like how it one of the big things so she's got those big eyes and that's like an ingrained yeah. human characteristic because you instinctively like love and want to take care of children who have oh. big eyes so that tends to translate to sexual attraction in adulthood yeah God. dropping go. some knowledge there you yeah go. There you dangerville go. podcast knowledge <laughs> nugget of the day I did not know that. we got to get a knowledge nugget segment there you go <laughs> talking about alliteration it's a win-win good stuff Indeed. Right. No, she'll be on OnlyFans immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she'll do okay. Right. I'm sure she'll land on her feet. Yeah. Yeah. Or her back, one of the two. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So. Yeah, no one will be talking about it in six months anyway. Yeah. Right. All right. So officials are working to determine what caused the 656 foot deep sinkhole or a sinkhole in Chilean mining town, Tierra Amarillo. They are apparently baffled that there is an enormous collapse on the site upon which they dig enormous fucking <laughs> tunnels and mine underneath it. So I yeah, think we just yeah. solved the fucking case there. You're welcome, Chile. Removing the uh, minerals from beneath the earth yeah. might have something to do with yeah. yeah. taking out the crust underneath. Yeah. How deep did you say it was? 656 feet. Holy shit. It was man. something like, I don't remember exactly, but like 100 Washington monuments or some shit could fit in this thing, some absurd number. But Jesus Christ. Just baffled. What caused this mysterious sinkhole with yeah, fucking 100 mile <laughs> tunnels being dug directly underneath this fucking site? It's baffling information. All right, and a sad note here. A sad one. Olivia Newton John. Passes away at the tender age of 73. Yeah, yeah, I heard that one. Did you hear what, uh... uh... (laughs) (laughs) Always got something cooked up here, folks. (laughs) Wait for it. John John Travolta was quoted as saying, Oh, (laughs) jeez. Ayo! (laughs) He's got a million of them, folks. That's good material, I'm not going to lie. (laughs) By the way, in uh, Googling Olivia Newton John's death, she's still like pretty good at 73, yeah, bro. I'm man. not going to lie, man. It's, yeah. it's a damn shame. Oh, yeah. Those <laughs> summer nights, man. <laughs> All right, man. Well, that was fucking awesome. Thank you for coming out. Oh, yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. I, I hope we got that fucking first intro shit. Yep. We'll see, you know, whatever. It's all good, man. But yeah, man. It was really fun having you out. Yeah, I appreciate it. shit, man. Uh, we'll have we'll, we'll have you back out. We'll do it again. You know, yeah, get for sure. I like talking music with you. Yeah, you know. for sure, man. It's good shit. All right, anybody got any fucking other uh, huge fucking things I got to talk about? No, man. I just uh, thanks right. for your, thanks for your time. Thanks for having me on, man. It was cool just to hang out. And yeah, for sure. Kind of our second time we got to just 
hang out and bullshit. So yeah, cool chat for sure, man. Cool Good to meet you, sir. Hell yeah, man. Let's keep it going. All right. All right peace, peace out, everybody. Peace. peace.